I decided it was about time that I did a little project and I was taken by this particular advertisement. It claims to be 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms and the main thing is it's it's it does get very good reviews and its claim frequency response and in particular the distortion levels are shall we say almost too good to be true and knowing that these come from uh, China in this case via AliExpress one has learnt from past experience to treat such claims with a pinch of salt so anyway we we, I've had a look at it and if we come down here a little bit see the spec supply voltage up to plus or minus 45 volts now not being one to want to push it to the absolute limit I decided to settle on 40 volts plus or minus 40 volts and it does specify that the 100 watts unspecified whether that's into 10% distortion or what time will tell. But I decided to settle for plus or minus 42 volts. Uh, 40 volts, beg your pardon. And But look at these distortion figures. I know that by themselves they don't really mean anything, but even if you took it at worst case at a 10 watt output at 1 kilohertz, that is a very low distortion in anybody's book. Um, it says also output stage quiescent current. 30 milliamps and I think that's a little on the low side and it also doesn't specify that 30 milliamps is at what voltage because theoretically unless it's a very clever design the quiescent current will go up as the voltage goes up and as it's claimed to work from plus or minus 15 volt it may well be 30 milliamps at plus or minus 15 Anyway, it's, that's not an issue. Um, we have a quick look down here at the circuit. It looks a pretty good circuit insofar as it has the right ingredients, so to speak, for a class AB amplifier. Um, one of its odd things is that it doesn't have any adjustments on it. The center point, well, theoretically, if you give it an equal voltage plus an equal voltage minus, the center point should be pretty well in the center anyway, but there is no adjustment on it. And there's also no quiescent current adjustment, which initially worried me a bit because I couldn't see how you could get the quiescent current at 30 milliamps at different voltages because of Obviously, the higher the voltage, the higher the, the quiescent current would tend to be. That's what the PCBs look like. And these heat sinks here are not, thankfully, the output heat sinks. Uh, they are the driver and the um, bias heat sinks. And the, all the components are, are pretty standard. Those are the three transistors that fit on this PCB. And these are the output devices, and they're complementary um, pairs. All the components seem pretty good. Um, I've tested every component, and whilst you can't really test power transistors and things like that at high voltage, they all seem to be relatively well matched, which in a circuit like this they would need to be. And all the other components are exactly within 1%, which is the tolerance on certainly on the resistors, and the capacitors are within 1 or 2%. The electrolytics vary slightly more, but there again, they always do. That's what it looks like built. Now, obviously, without a heatsink, you're not going to be able to draw any power from that at all. In fact, under quiescent conditions, which is how I initially tested it, um, the transistors do get moderately warm, um, not too hot to touch, but um, take it from me, you must have a heatsink. Um, incidentally, I've assembled them and I found it absolutely fault-free. I started as usual with the smallest components, resistors, 
uh, capacitors and the transistors. And the last thing I put on was the power transistors because at the time that I built these, I wasn't quite sure um, how I was going to mount them as at the time I didn't have any heat sinks or even a piece of aluminium or aluminum if you prefer. Initially that looks like a big roll off until you realize that from here to here is 0.2 of a dB. So it's 0.2 of a dB down at 20 hertz which is pretty good in anybody's book and for all intents and purposes it's completely flat to 20k which is again fine and I think you could possibly increase that uh, or, or stop the roll off even more if you really wanted to by changing the input coupling capacitor but it's still I mean why would you mess with it again some more figures if these are true figures then this clearly comes under the heading of hi-fi um, and for whatever it was, $23 for the kits. Um, that's pretty good. And all the components were good branded components. Even the transistors were marked, um, I think they um, from Japan. But here's where they're telling you how wonderful the transistors are. KEC is not a brand that I actually know, to be fair. Um, but they look good, taste good, and by golly, they sound good how I'm going to power this because here in New Zealand some components are really expensive now obviously if this is going to give a hundred watts per channel into even eight ohms toroidal transformers which would be the ideal thing for this and again in an ideal world one for each channel but these are a horrendous price in most countries but in New Zealand they are ridiculously expensive so I considered using a switch mode power supply now I can hear all you audio files throwing your hands up in horror saying oh the power the, the rails will be full of crap and it, it'll be buzzing and fizzing and whatever and initially I thought yes that theoretically could well be true but this cost 54 New Zealand dollars delivered and it's actually a 500 watt plus or minus 40 volts dual voltage power supply which is absolutely perfect and as a sort of secondary thing it's also got a plus or minus 15 volts I can't remember the current I think it's either half an amp or one amp which will be ideal for any preamp should I decide to do one and it's also got a plus 12 volts which again which um, that's just single ended which would be ideal for any other little modules or things that I care to put on so it would seem to offer a perfect result well you've now got the added bonus of seeing me talking to you because I've just realized I haven't got the uh, camera switched on so I'm not sure whether it's a plus or a minus there Here's the specs that you can actually get with these 500 watt switch mode power supplies. The one I, I, I actually purchased, ironically, isn't shown here. Um, oh, yes, it is. Beg your pardon. Um, plus or minus 40 volts DC, and it does show you down here the, ex the, ex the auxiliary voltage is, as it is one amp. I, I had a feeling it was, and half an amp for the 12 volt. Another item which I've purchased, which I just propose to show you, but not go into any great details. Obviously, what I've got so far is a nice lash up on the bench, which you'll see imminently. Um, but at the end of the day, I want this to look nice. So I've purchased one of these. It hasn't arrived yet. Again, you can go to this site if you want to have a look at it, but it will make the project a nice finish. It's got heat sinks on the left hand side and right hand side. So one module on each I think will provide all I need to make this work satisfactorily. This is another item that I've ordered again which hasn't arrived and it's simply to enable the um, 
speakers to be isolated on switch on and switch off. Now this particular amplifier doesn't make any noises at all when you switch it on but what does happen is when you turn it off. Now when you turn the thing off and you've still got a signal running you get that distorted awful sound that you get when the power supply is running out of uh, volts. So this is a very simple kit which will give a, um, an on delay and isolate the speakers when you turn it off and it also has a DC monitor so that if you happen to get nasty volts on your speaker well hopefully it will switch off before you get nasty volts on your speaker. Now this is my test lash up. One thing I would say about this, when I was testing it before I had any load on it, this holds on to the 40 volt plus or minus for over a day. Because I finished playing around with this, went to bed, and in the morning I came along and connected the meter to it, and to my surprise, it was still about 38 volts. It only dropped over uh, 2 volts overnight, so very nice quality electrolytics. Uh, but not something you'd want to touch. So, well, no, now it's not a problem because I've got a load on them, but uh, as it stood, somewhat dangerous. Now, the heat sink on here I thought may have been slightly generous, but in reality, that's the sort of size heat sink you need. I've not done any sine wave testing on this yet, but under quiescent conditions, just left on its own, um, for half an hour or so, you can just feel the ambient temperature on the heat sink is just slightly warm to touch. But um, I was giving it some stick yesterday and uh, my poor little speakers were nearly jumping out of the box. I was, <laughs> I was really thrashing it, uh, particularly with some, some low end stuff. And even with this size heat sink, it did get moderately hot. Not toasty, but um, I don't know why it is, if you're the same as me, but I have to keep touching the heat sink. I don't know whether there's something erotic about it, but I find I'm always feeling how hot the heat sink is. So with the module that I've, um, the case that I've purchased, it's not as comprehensive the heat sink as this one, but there'll only be one module on it. So I don't think there's going to be a problem there. Now, as you can see, it's a bit of a bird's nest here uh, because obviously this is just my test rig and there's no way I'm going to cable tie and make the leads as short as possible. All I've done is each of the supplies to each module has a two amp quick blow fuse in here. And this was partly just for testing because as it's a switch mode power supply, it's not the sort of thing you can ramp up um, it either gives the voltage or it doesn't. Now, bear in mind, this is supposed to be a 500 watt power supply. These silly little connectors here are really not man enough for the job because even on my test rig, the wires aren't as thick as I would eventually use. So what I've done on this particular uh, moment, I've put one of the cables from one channel into the screw and I've soldered the other cable onto the underside of the board because there's no way two wires will go into there. So from that, from that point of view, the power supply is really, they haven't thought about it. These are fine because they're low current and low voltage, but this is where the thing is going to get all its current from. And, um, I think I will probably end up soldering all the wires to the bottom of that terminal. I'm just going to show you now the actual voltage. We just turn the power on. Um, it'll buzz a bit because I don't have the um, input. It's just an input um, connector's open circuit. But don't worry about it. It doesn't do that normally, I promise you. Right. We'll go on to... That's really annoying, isn't it? There. And you see that 40 volt supply is 42.6 minus. And 42.6 plus. 
Right, we'll have a look at the uh, quiescent current now. Now, as this is plus or minus 42 volts, um, it's kind of ironic that's exactly the voltage I actually wanted. And the power supply does supposed to be 40 volts. But even when I connected a dummy load to it the other day, and even with a 2 amp draw, the voltage only drops about 0.2 of a volt. So that's pretty good. I'm, I'm really quite impressed with that. Anyway, what I've done, I've just put the test meter in series with one of the supplies. Um, bearing in mind, it will also be a similar draw from the negative rail. And the other amplifier would be obviously similar. And so we don't get that buzzing. I've terminated the input. So um, we won't get that buzzing anymore. Because one thing I can tell you about this amplifier, it's one of the quietest I've ever encountered. Um, I can lay my ear right on the um, tweeter and there is nothing coming out of it. In fact, initially when I first tested it, I didn't think it was working. But I sure found out when I switched the um, music on and it nearly blew my head through the wall. Anyway, we won't dwell on that, so let's switch the power on. And this is quiescent current in milliamps, showing at the moment 80 something or other. And it gradually creeps up, as you'd expect. Now the heat sink at the moment and the, the, the components in general are cold at ambient temperature of about uh, 20 degrees. And it will start to stabilise shortly. I'll stop the cam for the moment and come back in about 10 minutes. Right, 10 minutes has gone past. As you can see, it's pretty well stabilised at 105 milliamps. Um, obviously, like all these things, they do dance about a little bit. So that's being drawn from one of the supplies. And a similar amount will be drawn from the um, negative supply. Now this is the offset from the speaker to ground and that's on the 200 millivolt range so as you can see it's dancing around a bit but it, it never gets more than three millivolts and once it's settled down because again I've only just turned the power on um, it actually gets down to about 1.2 something like that plus so pretty good pretty good quite happy with that well, that's the end of the first part of this video. Yes, I'm sorry, there will be a follow-up. Because the good news is, I've just received these um, load resistors. And I'm just waiting for the heatsink to bolt them to. Then we'll do some proper power measurements and distortion and frequency response.